rational voter ignorance. Not so much a government fail, failure as much as an interesting way to look at things. Uh, rational ignorance is the idea that a voter could very rationally choose to remain uninformed because the marginal cost of obtaining information is much more than the marginal benefit of knowing it. So let's say there's a local election coming up. Um, different candidates have different views on the issues. How much time will it take for you to really figure out who you'd want to vote for? Now, if you have a general preference, I usually vote Republican, I usually vote Democrat. It's pretty easy, right? You just go and you vote straight party. But if you don't, it might take you a couple hours of work. Um, if it takes you two hours of research, it's almost certainly purely looking at the numbers, a terrible, terrible, terrible idea to go vote, right? I mean, it's, if you're voting and you spend two hours, your vote has such a tiny chance to be the one that influences the election that your expected benefit of voting is tiny. Now, often when students first see this, they're appalled. How could you recommend not voting? What if everybody took that attitude? Well, everybody doesn't take that attitude. If a lot of people started taking this attitude, then all of a sudden the probability of your vote mattering would be higher. And then there is an, then it would be rational to go vote, right? If you knew that there were nine people voting for president, it's pretty important that you go vote and it's worth your time to look at this. When there's 300 million, not so, well, it's not 300 million voting, but 300 million in the population, I think there's maybe like 125 five to 130 million votes. I'm guessing on this, but I think that might be the ballpark for president last time. Uh, that um, the chances that your vote influences the election is, it's not infinitesimal, but uh, it's probably less than one in a million. So if, if there was a million dollar difference in your life, quality of life, from one person being elected president to another, uh, in your expected benefit of voting then is one dollar because you have a one in a million chance to affect the election, and your gain is a million dollars. So it's very anybody who chooses not to vote. A lot of people will criticize them. You won't see economists criticizing them. Um, the there's it, there's very rational reasons not to. Uh, full caveat, I do vote myself. I kind of enjoy the whole process and like that we can vote. But I think anybody who uses these, you don't vote, you don't you don't get to complain. They're just being stupid because there's plenty of good reasons to remain uninformed. And in fact, I think as a society, we'd like those who remain uninformed not to go vote. Um, that's my normative view. Once again, normative views never be tested. But um, you will very rarely see an economist criticize things. Another reason why it might be rational to not go vote, votes aren't divisible. Let's say you know it's one of two candidates and one has the views on social issues you really like and the other has views on economic issues that you really like, but they're different. And so you really don't like the views of half of the views of one or half of the views of the other. Why go vote? Right? I mean, unless there's one way, why are you going to take the time when you're so ambivalent? So the point on this is a person could logically choose not to be informed about issues and not vote. Um, uh, it's what economists would call rational voter ignorance. Uh, here's an example, uh, use of bond funds. I, I found this, this was from an actual vote. I, I have no idea what this thing is saying. I, mean, I, I, I suppose I could spend time to do this. This wasn't from my area or anything, but how many people really want to spend the time to find this out? Now, plenty do, but it's tough to criticize somebody who thinks, you know what, my life is busy, I'm not going to figure out what to do on this. Okay, another way governments can fail is bureaucratic inefficiencies. So the bureaucracy is the body of non-elected officials who operate government agencies, like the Food and Drug Administration, the USDA, Department of Agriculture, and you know, the EPA, and every other government agency you can think of. Government bureaucracy tends to be inefficient. Why? Well, there's no motive for prof uh, profit. It's very difficult to fire people after a couple of years, and there's often no adverse consequences for poor performance. But it's, you kind of put a recipe together for things being inefficient, and this is it, right? No motives for profits. Um, you do a terrible job. Sometimes you can even get 
more money if you do a terrible job because government agencies say well we weren't able to do the job on this amount of money we need more uh it's a it's a big recipe for uh inefficient entities and in fact that's what you see uh, bureaucracies are inefficient uh for a lot of these reasons the short-sightedness effect with politicians well politicians are either running for like a two-year term a four-year term or a six-year term i mean except in special cases but uh, suppose a policy is passed that's going to have a cost 20 years down the road yeah, that doesn't affect your chances for re-election so if you have benefits now but the cost occurs 20 years from now politicians who would want to maximize their chance of being re-elected may very well vote for those you can see this on issues like budget deficits welfare where some people are getting money now but it really harms the incentive to work and has terrible consequences down in the future um, you could you see those um, short-sightedness effect in, with a lot of politician votes take-home message from the government failures section is that government failures are costly uh, they exist they're costly and the reason we're going through this is we spent time on market failures and I wouldn't want anybody to say, oh, looks like we have an externality. The government definitely should do something. That's not the case. Sometimes the government should do something. But just identifying a market failure is not enough to justify action. Um, the gover you know governments are going to screw up. So really, the cost of the market failure should be very high because of the many ways that governments can fail.